You're listening to the Worship Together podcast, where we have honest conversations about the songs we sing and the way we lead. It's ridiculous to me that God accepts praise from us. The song is a bit of a reminder to us all of just who Jesus is. I'm your host, Jimmy Williams. This week, I sat down with Hillsong United's Joel Houston. Joel has been a part of United since its earliest days and has seen the band go from being a youth band at Hillsong Church in Sydney, Australia, to one of the most influential bands in the history of worship music. He was very open and honest about the future of the band, how he avoids feeling pressure to deliver on the world's expectations, and what God taught him about finding his calling. It was a great conversation. But before we get there, let's go to Team Talk. Well, joining me today is Goody and Jessica. What's up, guys? Hey. Hello. Man, we were actually um, coming off like a a pretty crazy week. Hillsong United's pre-order went up this week. I can't wait for everybody to hear this record. Man, it's so good. We spent some time, obviously, the last couple of weeks with Joel and the band uh, shooting some video. That's why we were in San Francisco. Yeah, that's right. We can now now say why we were on the roof of the hotel in San Francisco. (laughs) So we were... Uh, spend some time with them, got to, one, hear these songs, but also see them do them in more of an acoustic way, which was really exciting. And so the first song, Wonder, went up today at Worship Together, and super cool. It really completely uh, reinterprets the song. And I'm pretty sure in the first 14 minutes of the video posting, it had 18 or 19 shares and almost 100 likes, so that's pretty crazy. Well, we're excited for the church to see these songs and just excited for the band. Whenever there's a new United record, I think there's always a buzz around the mm-hmm. office. I love the cover, too. Yeah, there's a couple of animated versions out there. Like the world, I noticed, the world is turning yeah. and the color wheel is spinning. So there's nothing wrong with your device if the world isn't turning because there's somewhere it's spinning. There's a static world. There's Sometimes a, <laughs> there's a static color wheel. Right. Sometimes they're both moving. It's very they're creative. They're pretty cool, though. It is very cool. At one point, I was scrolling down my Instagram feed this morning. And I follow quite a few of those guys, but between everybody on their team and all the Hillsong channels, I had like 15 different versions of that thing. Just It was just one after another in my Instagram feed. Also this week, Worship Central pre-order went up for their yeah. new record. We're huge Worship Central fans around here. Music for sure, but also we just love what's happening in the UK. Mm-hmm. I mean, the exciting things that are happening there with the church. And Tim Hughes, who was at HTB in London, uh, in the last couple of years, has left there. They they w- were sent to Birmingham. He's now a vicar, which At is Gas Street Church yeah, in Birmingham, which is incredible. You know, worship leaders turned pastors. I don't know what to think about it, but which it's, a week it's cool. from today we'll be sitting there for the uh, album release party for that record. That's right, and shooting some video the day before. So yeah, so you, can, you can go to iTunes and actually. Uh, purchase the pre-order. You, there's an instant grat track called Mercy Road that's up there that's super cool. But this music's amazing. Just great songs for the church on there. So we're really pumped about this and excited to do some cafe videos, get these songs out, and let the church hear them. Yeah. And, Jimmy, c- can we talk about the, the phone situation that happened during your worship service last should we, week? Should we talk about it? I think you should talk about should it. I, I want to hear this. Should I change names you to should protect use, the innocent? Yeah, you should, you should use different <laughs> names. But I'm not going to change the name because I'll I love my worship pastor so much, and he's such a good guy, and he's got a he's got a great sense of humor. So I want him to hear this because it's it's just an amazing story. Okay. Yeah. So Sunday, our pastor had just finished this amazing message, and a couple of the worship team had went up to sort of prayer noodle behind what he was doing at the end. You call it prayer noodle, not it's, prayer pad. <laughs> it's just the prayer noodle. There's no. That's what map. we do. It's the worship team and the worship leaders. They move under the cloak of prayer yeah. during church. And we've taught our pastor even, he'll just say, hey, could you guys noodle right here? All right. So anyway, so we go up and it's this really kind of serious time. And our worship leader, Wes, who is my brother, I love him so much. But anyway, he lays his phone down on a music stand, one of those metal you know, music stands during this prayer. And he must have accidentally hit the Siri button. That's the, all I can figure out. Oh, no. This is not good. So, well, you know how in iOS you can ask Siri to call you whatever Wes's is not Wes's is not, not Wes. Wes so apparently Wes asked Siri to call him Big Daddy 
<laughs> the pastor Amazing. had to stop the prayer, acknowledge the fact that Siri had just called Wes Big Daddy, and uh, before we could move on and have anything. We could probably have an happened. entire episode on church distractions. Well, the I think our pastor handled it so well. One, you got to acknowledge that. Yeah. You can't let Big Daddy I didn't get you by. that Big Daddy <laughs> happen and not acknowledge that something just happened. <laughs> Big Daddy just <laughs> happened. <laughs> uh, but he, so he acknowledged it. We moved on. Oh it was gosh. such an amazing moment. Anyway, Wes, if you're listening, buddy, I'm so glad you brought so much joy to my life this week. And I love you, man. Well, Jessica, what's happening at Worship Together this week? United is happening. Yeah. If you have so seen, I see the world in light. I see the world in wonder. I see the world in light. Bursting in living color. I see the world your way. And I'm walking in the Basically, all focuses on that. They have the two instant grats with United right now. So we'll have a free chart, new song cafe for Wonder. So we actually have an exclusive package at Worship Together going for United's new album. And it's a worship leader bundle that'll include the album, also a poster that's handwritten from Joel Houston, and also charts for all of the songs so that the worship team can play them. So you can pre-order all of that anytime leading up to the album, which is pretty cool. And you still get all the little instant grats that would come at iTunes. So you still get Wonder and sh- Splinters and Stones today. Yep. Right? And everything that comes along the way. But it's pretty cool. That poster poster looked good in everybody's office when they get it. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, it's a really cool piece. Basically a couple extra dollars for all of the charts and also a handwritten post- poster from Joel Houston, which is pretty cool. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, great, guys. So that's Team Talk this week. Next up, On the Radar. Welcome to On the Radar. This is the part of the show where we look at a song, resource, or trend we see emerging in the church each week. And uh, and this week, I want to talk about Do It Again. This has kind of been in my head since we left Lift a couple weeks ago. Elevation. It's the Elevation song, right? Yeah, Elevation was there leading. And I mean, I'd heard it, but like to experience that song live and then Outcry came a couple days later to Nashville and we saw it again. And like songs has been in my head and on my heart ever since. Elevation since did it that. again. Yeah, they did it again. <laughs> no pun. <laughs> no pun intended. But I, I just, I love this song. Um, I think it it's unique in the way that it's structured and how it builds. And it's a little bit, sto- it's almost like story, you know, a little bit of, okay, everybody join in here and then let's just claim this bridge together. And I was, I was super encouraged when I was looking at it to add it to church this week because we're going to do it on Sunday. And I saw our friend Matt Redman co-wrote it along with some of the Elevation crew. I was really happy to see Matt's name on there. (laughs) There's a few songs like this that are sort of percolating up in the church that kind of cover around this theme of like, you know, God, we recognize all the cool things and the great things that you've done throughout history. And we're asking you to do it again Mm -hmm. type of thing. And the other one I I thought about that's around that same theme is is the new Kim Walker Smith song, Fresh outpouring and so there is a a real i think a hunger and a cry from the church right now for kind of revival type of songs and that's kind of what this is it's sort Mm -hmm. of a prayer revival song for the church yeah songs that help us kind of thank god for what he's done in the past and then kind of have faith to sing over what we're believing him to do in the future having both those things in the same song really helps to kind of gather people because anybody can sing that you can be in whatever season you're in and one of those things is going to be applicable to your season of life and where you're at and where you're, what you're asking god for so there's something about singing with expectancy of what god's going to do and i think that really helps it go from your head to your heart Because sometimes, you know, you talk about the things like God's faithfulness and that he all the things are true that are said. But something about singing that and proclaiming that for your life, that he will do it again or that he's coming again or, you know, whatever his promises are. I think there's just something about proclaiming that in song that really helps that sink down and help you actually believe it, at least for my experiences. Yeah. And we just loaded up lyrics, charts, resources that worship together. So you can actually go there and find the song added into your your planning center set for next week yep it's there 
All right, that's what's on the radar this week. Joel Houston is a musician, songwriter, pastor, and leader of the Sydney-based worship band Hillsong United. Born out of the youth ministry at Hillsong Church in Australia in 1998, United's music has gone on to reach hundreds of millions around the world with a message of hope and salvation. You carry us, you carry us, when the world gives way. You cover us, you cover us, with your endless grace. In 2014, Their song, Oceans, became the longest-running number one on Billboard magazine's Hot Christian Songs chart and won a Dove Award for Song of the Year. In addition to being the creative force behind United, Joel also helped plant Hillsong Church, New York City with Pastor Carl Lentz. Joel says that United's upcoming studio album, Wonder, was written to elevate the conversation, reawaken the soul, and lift our eyes to the wonder of the superlative truth. Fate holds nothing on the providence I know. Longer bound to things of wood and stone When all I had to offer was my worst You saw my heavy heart and loved me first Your beauty staring down my brokenness You chose to throw your heart into the mess Passion crashing down upon my bed You were there all this time Like a river running through my failure You carried me all this time Like the splinters buried in your shore Joel, thanks for joining us, man. Thank you. Man, we should probably let people know that we just finished up an entire day of video shooting. <laughs> so I know you're completely tired, man. Yeah, I know. It's fine. I mean, I'm feeling good. I was just saying, I'm like, the coffee's just starting to kick in. So yeah, that's good. Talk loud and fast. And you guys just flew in. Um, actually, it was, a, it was kind of a Frankfurt, Germany to <laughs> San Francisco. Yeah, well, yesterday we flew True. from Bahrain to Saudi Arabia to Frankfurt and then to San Francisco. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. So. Wow. And, of course, you guys were um, over in Israel with the Hillsong Tour and, mm-hmm. and Pastor Brian and Bobby were – we're uh, preaching and it just sounds like an amazing trip. Yeah. And, um, was there one story that kind of came out of that that was really special to you? I mean, it was, uh, well, I mean, I, we did it of dirt and grace, you know, so that was kind of like after that, it's hard to kind of top anything. But this was cool because there was people there. When we did of dirt and grace, it was just us worshiping like in the field outdoors somewhere. And, um, but, you know, I mean, look, on the last night we were in Caesarea and it was just, it was packed and, and, um, and, yeah, I mean, it was. It's just. It's always a wild experience. I mean, um, especially that. I mean, that part of the world to me is just so intriguing and so so interesting in every level. And then to go from there, and then 
Um, we were in, uh, in the United Arab Emirates, we were in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and then in, and in, uh, Bahrain, which we'd never been to. And, um, and I mean, people, I mean, it was crazy. And, you know, these are, these are Muslim countries, you know, um, and we're, we're doing open air events and, you know, it was like 10,000 people in Dubai and, um, and the atmosphere and the passion and the work, it was just, it was amazing. So it was like, um, that to me was very, very special. And then, you know, the kind of the contrast of that and, and Israel was, was very interesting. Yeah. And you guys are in process of planning a church uh, in Israel. So yeah. That, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it is. It's exciting. Is that area, um, is it open for Christian, like evangelism? Are they? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, well, the interesting thing, I mean, in Israel is, is, you know, Christianity is kind of like a, the Christians are kind of, a, it's a little bit of a, I mean, the Orthodox Church, the Russian Orthodox Church is kind of everywhere there. And you've got like kind of every really, all the religions are represented one way or another. Um, so I think people are very open to it being a place of faith. It's the Holy Land. You know, everybody's kind of, um, we in there. I mean, anyone who's been to Jerusalem, it's just amazing because you've, you have just kind of these three cultures of, faith kind of all in the one spot claiming the same kind of hill and um and that's no coincidence because it's all part of the same story it's just people have kind of running with different versions of it and i think for us you know um you, even when you are there and then you read kind of the story of what what jesus actually said while he was in jerusalem while in, in that kind of time right before he died and just after and then uh, you look at the 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 early church and and what they were doing. It's kind of like the stuff they're talking about when it comes to Rome and and even even um, Jerusalem. It's like it's it's so clear to see that now still the same. So I think it's pretty cool to have like kind of uh, I think there are some great churches in Israel, obviously. Like um, and uh, there's tons of them. But I think to be in the mix there is kind of pretty awesome. So you grew up in church. Of course, your your mom and dad planted Hillsong Church, and um, you just kind of grew up in it. And uh, at what point did you start doing music? And um, United wasn't even a thing, I guess, yeah, yeah. <laughs> until a certain time. But talk about that and just kind of like how, how you got into doing music, how you got into doing worship early on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think music for me – was an outlet um, that kind of meant I didn't have to follow in my dad's footsteps. Um, you know, I think when you grow up past a kid in our church, it was just a lot of pressure. You know, you're going to do what your dad does when you grow up. You, you know, <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. You know, like, in fact, I, I wanted to do anything. But, and, um, and I think, I think, you know, I didn't love music when I was a kid. I was more into sport and surfing and um, basketball and that kind of thing. And music felt like kind of a bit of a, um, just a hindrance and all of that. Uh, what changed, I think, things for me was my music teacher when I was about 14 um, just recognized that I was kind of not learning all the the songs that he was giving me and I wasn't putting the work in. Um, and then one day week he just said to me, he goes, okay, your job this week is just to write a song. And I remember looking at him and going, what do you mean? Like from nothing. Like, <laughs> And he's like, yeah, just write a song, just make something up. And what was wild was, I mean, I remember – racing home to the piano which i despised and all of a sudden just looking at this thing and going hang on like you can make stuff up like as in you can come up with and i just it unlocked i was into i've always been into art and drawing and so forth so i think it just there's this like different view so at that point like then the piano became fun uh and then all of a sudden i realized that you could make up rather than having to play songs that i didn't really like I could learn how to play songs that I did like and I could learn how to write songs like the songs that I liked and that's kind of where music came into it. And um, so I started, you know, playing in bands in school and so forth and then we had a band with um, Mikey was a part of it, a guy called Luke Munns and a guy called Marty Sampson who many people know. So we had like this rock band and um, it was kind of like the outlet to like not have to do church stuff. Um, but we kind of had like, you know, rock star missional dreams that was like, we're going to be a rock star. <laughs> we're going to be rock stars, but it's not about us. We're going to use all the money that we make um, right. to feed the poor and so forth. And uh, of course, I think God knew better because deep down, I think it was all about us, but one way or another, um, 
thing. And it, it was actually like kind of like breaking up. Um, it, it was heartbreaking at the time because we were in this band for six years and everything was kind of going wonderful, to be honest. Um, and it was all lined up. And then um, the band kind of just broke up out of nowhere, like right kind of when we were, it was all happening. And I remember Mikey was devastated. Um, and so was I. And I remember we, we just talked and said, well, look, like, let's just throw ourselves into what's in front of us. I think my dad was preaching a message at the time. He still preaches now. That it was like, you know, to use what's in your hand to fulfill what's in your heart. And so we looked at what was in our hand at the time and it was um, our youth ministry. And so we just threw ourselves into making our Friday nights um, the best that they could be and making the music something that we liked and that our friends, you know, liked. And, and that essentially um, became united uh, what is now united yeah. and the, the beautiful thing about it is i mean i was just saying to you before um like that scripture proverbs 16 verse 9 in a man's heart he plans his course but the lord determines his steps for me it's a story of like god knew what was in my heart he knows what's in our heart more than we do often um and sometimes it looks like you know we're not good at getting what we want because god knows what we need but when you get what you need you realize that everything you want and everything you never knew you wanted is in that as well. And I think that's what United's become. I think for us, it's been actually just a process of obedience. We'd never had these dreams. Like if you asked me at any time along the journey, even a few years ago, like how long we'd be doing this and what it would look like, it was kind of like, I don't know, we're just doing it now, like because it's what's in our hand. And so when we were 19, that's what it looked like. When we were 25, it was still in our hand. And the desire has been to, as long as it's in our hand, to give the best of what we have to it. And so, like, I always say now, like, I think every project, maybe this could be our last. And I don't know that when we were all, none of us getting younger, um, young and free is doing amazing stuff, you know, like Hillsong Worship. There's plenty of, like, we're all involved with that as well. And, you know, there's songs for the church. And United is this thing that's actually just kind of been about the process more than anything for us as individuals and friends and just people who are learning what it is to follow God and to, to give our best to Him and to use art and music in a way that helps people. Um, grow in their relationship and that's all we've ever done so you know we went into this project like the one we've just done wonder and um and it's just been a story of going all right we're going to treat this like it's our first album like we've never done one before we're going to treat it like it's our last like we'll never do another one and then and it, all of a sudden it's like there's a great responsibility in that but it takes a lot of the pressure off maybe what people are expecting or what people think we should do and just kind of goes hey let's we love music we love God, we love art, we love the word of God, we love the story of God, and we love the story of people. And what better to do with our lives here and now but to kind of mesh all those things in something that's going to uh, help people. And, um, and so it's, it's more fun than ever. Have you ever seen the wonder In the glimmer of her sight As the eyes begin to open Blindness meets the light If you have so say I see the world in light I see the world in wonder I see the world in light Blessed in living color I see the world your way And I'm walking in the light Have you ever seen the world? It was really interesting before Zion. You guys were were playing these massive, you know, um, worship events, and um, and this was all happening. You know, it wasn't about Christian radio, and it wasn't about <laughs> even like a real like you guys didn't tour a whole lot. I mean, just yeah. did kind of select dates, and and we would do churches and conferences, and um, but there was a hunger, I think, in people for just experiencing the presence of God. And I, th I think that's um, those early concerts that I went to, that's felt like that was the draw there. It was, you know, it was these songs and it was relevant, you know, to, and there, and there was young people coming, which yeah. I think was amazing. Like, you know, it, it wasn't all 
you know, people my age, it was, it was teenagers and 20 somethings and these really difficult <laughs> yeah. ages to reach were coming because they were experiencing something yeah. there. I think a lot of it, honestly, is, I mean, we, when we started out as a youth, like, again, you couldn't make it up. Like we didn't plan it. It's not like, um, we kind of, I mean, I, th- I feel like now there's like this kind of, um, there's a whole bunch of things that you tick off in order to kind of do what you want to do. You know, like um, when we first started, I remember, I mean, Darlene and Hillsong kind of had, had paved the way definitely as far as for us to kind of do our own thing. But we I, we weren't really into that music. Um, and this is when we were very young. And I remember when we first started kind of every time we came anywhere near the States, it was just like, this isn't going to work here. You know, if you want to work, you're going to have to do 250 dates. You need to do this. You need to, you can't have that kind of music and you can't say those kind of things. And it was just, it was just reasons why not. And we were like, it's okay. Like, we're not trying to make it. Like, we're trying to just do what we're called to do. And um, so I remember we got a phone call from the guy in Canada, um, Paul Kelly, and he just, he just said, Hey, I want to bring you to do these events. And we're like, what, you know, like, in Canada, that's like, yeah, that was last, like, that's almost America. <laughs> um, and we're like, yeah, cool. And I remember we, we went, we played this first event. Toby Mack was playing. It was like the big headline. I just remember it was like, you know, a lot of people. Uh, and then Delirious, Delirious running there are heroes. And I'm um, just like going, look, how are we meant to get up after like Martin Smith, you know? And, um, and we got up and I mean, I don't know. It was probably terrible, but I just remember that lean in was completely different. It was something happened and, and I was kind of like, okay, man, okay, they know the songs. And it was really strange. Like, how do they know the songs? Because it was kind of, it wasn't like the internet was a thing. You know, yeah, it was, sure. but it wasn't like it is now. There wasn't like, YouTube, I didn't, YouTube didn't exist, you know, like, um, and that's, that's the beautiful thing about music because a song will travel. And we can, you can put all the work into trying to make a song travel or, you know, that's where radio is useful and that's where like, you know, worship together is amazing and, you know, um, all the different things now. But a song, a song will go, like a great song, it'll find a way. It might take time, might take a few years, but, you know, like there's these songs that just, they, they have a life of their own and, and God, if he chooses to breathe on them and they can do anything. And, um, and I don't think that's changed. I think, you know, now it's like, um, we can. There's definitely work that you can put into a song, but when when God breathes on a song, you know, he's a good good father. What a beautiful name! Like these songs, um, just in recent times, that are just, you know, you can't. It's it's something. There's something divine about it. Something beautiful, and and so I think that's the thing we're still chasing is to like actually at the end of the day, it's just to try and make write songs that are honest that mean something to us and. I think every time we've strived hard to kind of fit boxes, it actually hasn't worked for us. You know, a song like Oceans, it wasn't a box fitter in any way, shape, or form. And um, and it, it, it did what it did. And so we're just trying to be faithful with what we have now and see what God wants to do. And th- that song was really um, a real pivotal point, I think, in the band because um, when that song really just exploded into the church and i remember you guys when you 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 guys are in town and and just played us the music and a few tracks off the record and there's a few of us in a room and we you played oceans and we heard taya sing it and we're all asking each other who's this singing because yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've never Seriously. met her before and um but to see what happened with that song and just it had a life of its own um did that really um kind of take the band it felt like it opened up all of a sudden like there was this this worship following and then all of a sudden there was all of these other listeners that got yeah. exposed to what united was doing it was really funny because i mean again number right around that season i didn't know like as we were about to kind of do zion um i didn't know if we were, should do an album because i definitely felt like i mean united had we'd been doing it for 11 year, 12 years of traveling and really had seen what we thought was like, I mean, how much further can it go? You know, it felt a little bit that way. Not like we were doing great things or anything, but, you know, we were all very content and kind of blown away by God's grace. And, and we, you know, now we all have families. I just moved to New York. Um, so a couple of the guys were like, are we going to keep doing this? And I remember having like a, a moment, um, with God, it was really strange. I was sitting in a windowsill, just looking out in New York one night. And um, I felt I felt like God said to me, like, what do you want? 
And uh, and I was just strange because I was like, I, I don't know. And then I thought about it. I was like, I haven't asked God for anything for a long, long time. Not for me. Like when I prayed, it was always usually praying for someone else or praying for something else or praying like for a you know, church or for other people or just, you know. I really, there was no kind of like real, um, I prayed to God for a long time for a wife, you know, and he came through. So yeah. <laughs> uh, since, since, uh, since that had happened, I really hadn't prayed. Like ask God like from a dream point of view, like, you know, when you're a kid, it's like, God, like, what do you want me to do? Like speak to me, do this, you know? And I, I remember just saying to God, like, I, I want to know that you wins at our back. Like, I want to know that you're in it. I just, what I want to know is that if, if, if you want us to keep doing this united thing, then you have to breathe on it in a different way and do something different. Cause I don't want to keep just rehashing the same cycle, playing in the same venues, going to the same things, writing the same kind of songs. I want to know that you, you you're in this. And I really felt like that. I mean, that was probably eight months before oceans, but like, I really felt like oceans was a bit of that kind of sense of, uh, you know, how Taya came into it, where she came from. We didn't have a girl, like we've always kind of had a girl who's been a part of it. Brooke was a part of it for a long time, other girls. Um, and for different reasons, you know, Brooke was doing her solo type stuff and um, a couple of the other girls had kind of had families or moved elsewhere. And um, and so it was this sense of like, and even the song, you know, like where the song came from, how it kind of fell together. Um, we wrote a girl song without a girl in the group and then, you know, I kind of saw Taya um, leading worship, and but she wasn't leading worship. She wasn't singing. She was just on stage, and she just had a presence about her. And I was with Brooke Legitwood at the time. I said, who's that? And um, she's like, your name's Taya. She's, she serves in the city. She works with, like, young people in there. And and, um, and then she said, have you heard her sing? I said, can she sing? She's like, yeah, she can sing. And we went up to her afterwards, and I said, hey, like, do you want to come and do some BVs tomorrow? It was, like, second last day of recording Zion, hadn't written the lyrics for Oceans yet, but we recorded all the music. She came in, she sung some BVs. We said, can you come back tomorrow and sing a lead? And so she turned up the studio and um, still didn't have any lyrics. And I grabbed Maddie and I said, let's go. I said, we're not coming back until we've got the lyrics. And we went for a walk and um, literally the, the, the lyric dropped out of heaven. Like it, as fast as I could type it in my phone, first line to the last line just dropped. And, um, and then even then, I think, you know, she went in, she recorded it. And I remember us kind of going, wow, okay, that was wild. Um, and it wasn't until afterwards as well, probably the same time as you, like listening back to the record, it was like, there's something on this and I can't explain it. And it's, and, uh, and it just felt like that whole thing to me was like just God answering that prayer of like, hey, like I just want to know you're in it. And, and then the last few years have just been um, crazy because it's, it's been just a different season for us. Um, and lots of different doors different kind of avenues and people and yeah you show up like you know good morning america yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, it's I, amazing that you know this is a worship band that's getting invited into but I, like but things. i'm not satisfied like with any yeah. of it you know and that's and that's like, having said that of course i am like i'm super very content and like blown away like it's not about more 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 for me it's just about knowing that god's in it like and so, you know, with this project, it's the same story. It's like with Wonder, it's like I don't want to just keep doing it. If we if, if we tour again, there's plenty of other people doing amazing tours, you know, like I look at you look at the, the schedule and there's people going everywhere and it's like I don't want to just be another thing like in that. Like I just want to I'd rather just be at home and be building our church and 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 doing that or um there's no shortage of things we can be doing, but if God is continuing to breathe on it and open the way, like then man we're all about it. And I would like, we'll, I know for all of us, like we'll die in the process. And, and the, honestly, the greatest story of United has been the relationships we've built with each other and this sense of unity, because we're all so different and our strengths are so different. Like if you were to take even just the guys you're seeing, like Jad, JD, um, Taya, Crocker, myself, it's like, we all kind of complement each other in the most amazing ways, like a puzzle, you know, and in and of ourselves, like, I don't think any of us would be able to do anything like what we do, but together there's something really special that happens. Same with the music. And to me, that's how the kingdom should work is how the church should look. And, and so I feel like super honored to do what we do, but there's nothing in me that wants to just like keep chasing more or bigger or better. To me, it's all about going deeper and wider in what God wants to do and, um, and opening opportunities. That's why the Middle East was so exciting because it was like, man, it just – the faith and the ground is so ripe. It's like, I don't know. So I don't know what the next season looks like. I don't even know what I'm saying, but I just feel like 
for all of us, like for worship leaders and so forth, I think some, so often we can look at the pathway that we think and think that's what we have to do. Like we have to write some songs, we have to put together a worship record and we have to get our church to be into it. And then we have to pump that record and then we have to get somebody to sign us <laughs> and then we have to get on radio and then we have to, and it's like, no, stop. Yeah. Like just write songs. Like write songs that matter to you and write songs that are honest and that there's like, you know, you're bleeding into the songs the same way as Jesus bled into the cross. And I feel like if we do that in a a way that's real and then just care about the people who are in front of us, care about our teams, care about relationships, care about the story, care about representing Jesus well, then like I just think God can do so much more than we think. And and, um, I think mostly what we do is limited to what we think God wants us to do. Yeah, and I, one of the most amazing things about you guys is, you know, you guys go out and, and you do these tours. You don't tour nearly as much as, as a lot of artists, you know, at, at the level you guys are at would tour, but you're very selective. And then everybody goes home and jumps right back into the church work that they left yeah. to go and tour. <laughs> yeah, and he's very, very happy about it, too. Yeah. You know, that's the wild thing. So it's, um, you know, and I think that speaks to, obviously, how grounded you guys are in uh, in church and uh, and writing songs that uh, people in the church can relate to and connect to and and sing, but also those songs that that translate outside of that. Yeah. And I think that's the exciting thing uh, that we've seen in the last several years with worship music is that of all music and Christian music, the one you would least expect to travel and to be as open for people that. Um, or not Christians is worship music. It's yeah. amazing, and we see it in a lot of the the data that yeah. we look at, where you know the streaming things, Apple Music, and Spotify, worship music streams really high compared to our you know Christian music yeah, overall. Um, and so there's a real openness, yeah. I think, and the artisticness and how you guys have progressed with United is you're 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 not just putting out just songs for people to sing, but there are songs that are really speaking to things that are happening in people's lives. Yeah. And they're, um, they're done in a way that's so creative. Yeah. Um, talk about just a little bit of the process. Cause I think with, it feels like with Zion, it sort of shifted in how you guys made records. I, I think was the last record before that, the live in Miami. Oh, we did after, Oh, there was live in Miami. There was after my, yeah. yeah. Before that. And then when you, Zion felt like, uh, and we talked about this a little bit yeah. earlier, like it's rare that bands actually record like this anymore, but you guys actually come together, spend a lot of time together writing. Yeah. Um, all the musicians come as well. And you yeah. guys spend a lot of time working out just parts of songs and, yeah. and it's really reflective of the music, but talk about that process a little bit. And, yeah. you know, maybe with this last record, like how does it start and, and what does that look like through the... I, I talked about Mikey earlier, you know, Mikey was the guy who um, really fell in love with music. He, we played in rock bands together and then, um, you know, he went, um, he really, I mean, with United, he was, he's just a kid genius. He was, like he was like a 12-year-old guitar prodigy, you know, and um, when the band I was talking about broke up, I was like 19, 20 at the time. And he was like 16 um, and he kind of left school and, and to, to pursue music. And then he was, you know, um, kind of stuck without a job, so to speak, and, like, <laughs> and, and an education. And um, so, you know, he kind of just is an amazing guy, but he went off and played in a bunch of bands and worked with like incredible producers, like in the kind of mid 2000s. And he would come back and meet up with us with United and tour and like we'd stay in touch and, um, you know, he was on Vans Warped Tour for years. And and then in about 2008, you know, I think he kind of realized that, yep, he's, he's done that and he just felt like passionate about worship again. Um, not that he ever lost it, but just he didn't want to be a rock star. And um, so he, he just said, oh, you know, I want, to, I want to produce the records. And I said, bro, if you could produce the albums, it would be the greatest gift because I have such a great relationship with him. We've best friends we started we like i said so he's done it since then that was aftermath was the first one he came back in and aftermath and zion uh, empires and then this one now and and uh and i love mikey because this you know he he he's um he's he's all about like just the 
the soul of it all and the organic. He cares more about um, the, the heart behind everything than kind of, you know, than all the polish and so forth. And yet he is just, he works harder than anybody I've ever known. And and t- he's just a perfectionist in the same way I am and a different way. And, and the team all kind of rallied to him and he cares more about people's, um, how they're feeling and, and how they, they're involved. So he includes people, even when they're maybe not the best. Um, you could find someone who's a better player or a better singer or whatever. He's just all about making sure that people are um, feel included and that's what we're about. And so he's just been awesome. Um, and we always start, you know, we write songs, um, kind of start writing songs probably about a year out from a project and um, – and then we just kind of set this date and we go, we do it old school. We, we set up um, a studio like they used to back in the day, like all the documentaries you, we used to watch about bands <laughs> yeah, right. growing up. The only difference is we don't do it on tape anymore, which I actually would be amazing to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we, we play as a band and we go in and, you know, I'll sit down and I'll go, here's a song and play it on a piano and the band, we're all, everyone's on, everyone kind of picks different instruments too. It's not like everyone's on a set instrument. And then we just jam. And we just play the songs until it's feeling good, and then we tidy it up a bit, and then we we record drums. We, and we were in we we're in this great studio in LA when we started this process, and I mean it's this unbelievable studio, all these big live rooms, and every artist is in there, and you know even when we we're in there, and we set up a band, and the guys are like literally freaking out. They're like, no one's done this here for like. 10 15 years like set up a band in that studio oh, and wow. I'm going, you've got to be kidding me well what about this band you know <laughs> said nah nah they just like it was all done on a computer and then yeah you know, they come in and just record bit by bit and so it was fun like it was really fun to do it that way and, and to me it just reminds me of again this is how we fell in love with music in the first place absolutely and that just if people don't know usually you know most records nowadays especially christian records are you know, they're tracked one instrument at a time. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's programmed and pre-programmed yeah. on computer. And then they'll come in and lay some live instru- instruments yeah. over it. And sometimes it'll be easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we probably save a lot of money too. But like for us, it's just, um, I don't know. There's something about that feeling. Like when we first started making, writing songs, you know, you turn up to a rehearsal with a piece of paper with some scratchy lyrics on it and a makeshift chord chart, you know, and you'd go, you'd give it to everyone. I'd play bass back then. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, this is how we're going to do the song. And we would just play it as a band. And then two hours later, we're singing the song for the first time. And it's so fun. And, right. you know, so that's, it's really the same. It's that feeling again. And I, I don't think there's any wrong or right way to do it. You know, like I often think, man, like we could just save so much energy if it was just like a couple of us in a room, just programming <laughs> it, you know, like doing it that way. Um, but I also think it's something that, is found in, in like the collaborative aspect of what we do that again it's it's not better or worse it's not right or wrong it's just how we like to do it and it's definitely more there's different flavors that show up in the music and personalities that come in on so many the- all the best parts are mistakes and that's what happens when you've got a live guitar like and we always sit there and go oh we need to, someone they want to redo the guitars or something and i'll be like yeah but you can't you can't fake that like that yeah like, yeah but i didn't mean it. it was the wrong note i'm like yeah but it's the best like it just it works and <laughs> i don't know it's fun yeah well man thanks for taking the time again it's been i know it's been a long couple of weeks and you guys are ready to go home and um but it was really great to sit down with you and just catch up and we appreciate the time no, my pleasure thank you well folks that's the show this week thanks again to joel houston You can find lyrics, charts, and videos for thousands of songs, including the ones you've heard today at worshiptogether.com, where you can also subscribe to this podcast. Be sure to check out our past episodes, which include conversations from Kim Walker-Smith, Chris McClarney, and Aaron Keyes. If you like the podcast, and we hope you do, we'd love it if you'd leave us a rating and review on iTunes. The Worship Together podcast is me, your host, Jimmy Williams along with David Gudekunst and Jessica Sweet. Also, thanks to Michael Fogarty for help making the show. The show is written, produced, and mixed by Michael Romero and Josh Babiar from Form and Function. You can find more information about them at formandfunctionmedia.com. Next week, we'll be featuring an interview with some of our friends at Worship Central, so be sure to join in for that. Thanks for tuning in, as always. We hope your church services are amazing this weekend, and we'll see you again next Tuesday.